It's a quiet one. These lights should be on emergency power, aren't they? No, I guess not. Utility, zero volts. You could. So we have a power outage here at these two new schools. Generator is running. Utility power is gone, which also shuts off the solar power because it can't be synchronized with the generator's supply. So lighting control is all switched over to emergency mode as far as what does have emergency source. Fire alarm generator module is active. Yeah, the central plant, that's the elementary school, and that's the middle school. They put, well, they put outside wall packs on emergency power here, and, but not the parking lot fixtures. Middle school is on generator power, so about half of the corridor lighting is on. Transfer switches. There you go. One of the air conditioners for the electrical room is kept going in power outage. Like, no. Oh, no it's yeah, it's not all of them. So look how many are in there. This one's got really good lighting up here. Like, I guess it's just one side. So I think the stairwell's dimmed down to 30% unless they sense occupancy. If I remember right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not the main. Utility is nothing. There's generator. Oh, there's no screen on this one anyway. So same in this school, one air conditioner is kept going in the electrical room, other ones not. About 50% of the corridor lighting is kept up and stairwell lighting is all kept. And bathroom lighting is also kept, just not individual classrooms. The elevators are also kept on emergency power at both of these schools. And there is battery backup, emergency lights in some areas, as well as UPSs on the data to keep it going in between the time of the generator starting.
two lights on the library on emergency and then the exit sign. Oh, maybe the library is upstairs. Okay, never mind. This isn't library. Yeah. So basically one side of the hallway is kept illuminated. Oh, but the handicap opener works, but the panic hardware doesn't, which is useless. So these are trying to open, but the panic hardware is not sucking in. <laughs> that is pretty stupid. And the exterior lighting's kept on. The wall packs are. So if you hit that, oh, not without the fob, never mind. You scan the fob, right? Yeah, let it go. I'm not going back in here. So this school, the central plant, and the middle school over there is all fed from the same one 250 kW generator right here that keeps all the lighting, life safety, all that sort of stuff running. Power just came back on, parking lot lights are back on. So once that goes through its utility check and then cool down time, it will first transfer back over and then enter cool down period. All right, with the interesting part of the video over, now I wanna do some explaining and answer questions that I know I'm gonna get and explain how the system works at this school. Power was probably only out for an hour at most and uh, everything worked as it should have. So let me answer some questions I can kind of predict I'm going to get and explain them. I don't know why the power went out. Probably to do with wind because it was a windy day and probably blew a tree down across some lines. The generator there is a 250 kW diesel generator at 600 volts and the reason it's diesel is because these schools are oftentimes meant to be able to be opened up to the community should a natural disaster occur and one of the natural disasters that we are subject to experiencing here is an earthquake and natural gas lines will shut down during seismic activity. So the generators need to be able to still run after a seismic event occurs. So they need to be powered by diesel that is locally stored on site. The generators power all life safety equipment. So that is emergency lighting, fire alarm systems, and in this school, elevators are also powered off of generators, as well as the PA system, as well as exterior lighting. And then data systems are also kept up and going. And some receptacles that are deemed other needed in, for convenience or life safety. This school is primarily illuminated by its regular lighting in emergency mode, so is how that works is specific lights are deemed emergency and they will be powered off of your regular lighting control system. However, some of the lights are on emergency modules where every light in that school has a module that controls it, that will control the dimming, the color adjustment, and tie into the network of lighting control. But the emergency lights have a unit that has two different input sources. It has your emergency input and a utility reference. So it is always powered off of its emergency input. That's its regular power. It's always powered off of a panel that is on generator, but then it also has a separate 120 volt input that's off of a non generator power. And that power source does not power it. That is simply used as a reference voltage. So if it sees that non generator, non emergency power is there, it knows that it's not in emergency mode, but if that other 120 volt drops out, it knows to then go into emergency mode, which you might say, well, what's the difference? It's already on emergency power. 
basically if you have your lighting control dimmed down for that lighting or that lighting is off and then it will then come on and ramp up to 100% brightness and ignore any commands from the lighting control system it will stay at 100% brightness and until that uh, reference voltage comes back it'll then go back to whatever it is requested to do by the lighting control network in the building that is how both schools operate and primarily in the hallways it's about 50% corridors are lit so whatever your normal lighting is, probably about 30 to 50% is kept up in emergency and bathroom lighting is kept fully on. And stairwells, I believe, operate the same way they usually do where if they don't sense occupancy, they will go down to 30% and then come back up. I'm not sure if it ignores the photo cells because these schools do have photo cells in the stairwells to vary the lighting level depending on how much sunlight is already going into the stairwells. So to do an emergency light test at this school, all you need to do is turn off the breaker that feeds the reference voltage and that will then switch everything over to 100% brightness, ignoring the lighting control network and turn on those fixtures that are powered by it. So this school uses very thin fixtures down either, either side of the hallway or across. And oftentimes in the elementary, it was one side of the hallway kept illuminated and in the middle school, they kind of did it a little different where it was half stayed. Pretty much any common area of the building was about 50% lit and libraries and certain classrooms that had a dividing wall that could be opened up into one large classroom because once it was opened up, the occupancy was over that set amount that required emergency lighting. Those have emergency lighting in them as well as the gym, obviously it's a large space, shop spaces, um, basically anything that's not a general classroom has emergency lighting. So that's including your office, any corridors, of course. And at this school, they were nice enough to actually do some outdoor lighting, which is nice because most of the schools that did have generators in the past did not have any exterior lighting. This doesn't illuminate the parking lots, but it does keep some of the wall packs on the side of the building illuminated in a power outage, which is nice. These schools are comprised as a central plant utility building a elementary school and a middle school and one generator. The electrical service for the buildings is 1600 amps, which comes into the main central plant and then is 600 amps to each school, where each school then has its own PDC in each building. And then we have one central generator, which I believe is about 400 amps at 600 volt. And that is sending, I wanna say 170 amps to each school and then 40 amps to the central plant. Now we have a total of five transfer switches. We have one backup transfer switch in the, in the central plant. And then each school has a backup transfer switch and a life safety transfer switch. Your life safety devices are required to be on their own transfer switch. So that's why each school that does have emergency lighting uh, and fire alarm systems, that is on the life safety transfer switch, which is probably the higher amperage transfer switch, I believe. And then each school has a general backup transfer switch for non-essentials like data and communication systems. But then the central plant only has a backup transfer switch. It's not life safety because any of the emergency light in, in there is battery backup and the fire alarm system has its own batteries so it does not need to be on a generator transfer switch. So basically in a power outage should either one of the five transfer switches lose power, it'll send a request and start the generator, but then only the transfer switch that actually needs the transfer power will take advantage of that transfer, of that generator power being present. So then the rest will just have two sources there and they'll only switch over if they need to, which 99% of the time, it's gonna be a power outage where the entire service loses power and all five transfer switches are calling for generator start and they will all transfer over, if that makes sense for you guys. As far as the, heating and ventilation HVAC systems. Each school in the electrical room keeps one of the two heat pumps running the mini splits going because you don't really need both of them because your, your electrically generated heat from your electrical room is going to be very small anyways because your school is not going to be running as many transformers as your primary utility power is gone. It's only gonna be running a couple small, small transformers to step the 600 down to 208 from the generator so your heat source provided from the electrical equipment is going to be cut down a lot smaller anyways so you're not going to need as much cooling load in those rooms and i believe some of the pumps of the ground source heating system are kept going 
to circulate any residual heat or coldness left, I guess, is the idea of that. And maybe some air handlers are kept going. I'm not 100% sure, and I believe air uh, the mini splits in the data rooms are also kept going. Fire doors are not on emergency power, which is sort of a flaw in my opinion. I think they should be for convenience. The I believe the fire shutter might, actually I can't say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that one is or not. Out of the schools in the district, these two new schools are by far the most well equipped for power outage. Pretty much every school gets a little bit better for the most part. We have had a couple schools though built sort of in a time period where you would expect a generator because older ones had been installed with them, but they weren't built with generator which is fine if it's a small school, but we have one middle school built in 2007, which is a good size building. And keep in mind, we've had schools built prior to that of a smaller size built with a generator, but that was primarily because it was deemed as a essential emergency community building. But it makes more sense for these buildings to have generators because not only it is needed if it's gonna be used as a community shelter, it is also way less work for emergency lighting maintenance. Sure, you're gonna to pay to fuel it up and have maintenance done on it, but what you're getting out of it is so much more than you'll get out of battery powered emergency lights, not only for runtime, but just capability. You can't power elevators and stuff with battery. Like that's a huge load, which is really nice that they actually put elevators on it at this school, because let's say my high school and the other high school elevators were not put on generator. So some of the newer elevators I found, like the newer one in the addition of my school has a battery backup system to, I guess, just enough power to open the doors and open hydraulic valve to lower the elevator to its uh, platformed level and provide a way for the occupants to egress. However, the older elevator in that school and the one from the other high school in 2015 do not have that battery backup from my understanding and uh, you will have an entrapment basically until the power restores, which in these buildings, your elevator would still stop for probably 10 to 11 seconds before the generator starts, but once transferred over, you will then be able to get out of the elevator. So I think it's pretty nice to have the elevators operational in a power outage. Well guys, that's about all the information I can think of off the top of my head. Oh right, solar panels do shut down. If they lose the main service, solar panels shut down. Anyways, I don't wanna bore you guys with a whole bunch of information. I apologize, this video was sort of short. I couldn't do a whole lot of filming because there was kids in the school, so I don't wanna be the creepy dude walking around the school filming the kids, so uh, that's why I couldn't get too many clips of that. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account, at Pickle700, for bonus content, content posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching.